much, Michelle. Um, I have been sitting in the audience listening to all the speakers, and my heart is bursting with pride about my hometown community, the work that's going on right here in Hillsborough County. And uh, let me just start out by saying that uh, I have to start with uh, the United Way, Diana. Uh, the United Way in our community has gone through many different uh, iterations, lots and lots of different strategic plans. Uh, as our community has grown and the needs have changed, uh, our United Way has had to change as well. And uh, not too long ago, uh, Diana, when you decided and the board decided that the focus of the United Way in our community was going to be, um, and you heard Diana say it so well, supporting families and bringing families out of poverty and providing hope and a sense of pride uh, for families to become truly self-sufficient. And here you are. Once again, I always think of our United Way as the community problem solver. Uh, that organization who can bring all these many groups together in one room and be the facilitator and uh, sometimes the funder and the supporter to make good things happen in our community. I am going to have just a few brief comments, but uh, uh, we are in the heart of political season. Uh, as soon as that South Carolina primary is over tomorrow, the, the spotlight will be on Florida, and we will be besieged by whoever is left standing out of South Carolina uh, going all over our state campaigning. And one of the things that uh, I've heard uh, that these candidates speak a lot about is uh, they all want to be Ronald Reagan. And I want to start out this morning with a quote. You may not have expected me to stand up and start talking about Ronald Reagan. <laughs> but let me tell you, uh, uh oh. See? Oh, here it is. Let me read to you a quote from Ronald Reagan that Ellen sent to me. Listen carefully. Ronald Reagan was talking about the earned income tax credit, which I presume Ellen was passed. Uh, during his administration, and he called the EITC the best anti-poverty, the best pro-family, the best job creation measure to come out of Congress. He couldn't, nobody could have said it better than Ronald Reagan, who was such a strong supporter and promoter of the EITC program. Well, that was long ago, but what happened? It just became just another one of those, you know, government uh, programs, tax credits. But what some people found in the early years of the 2000s was that it wasn't being taken advantage of. That the people who could really qualify for it and needed it weren't necessarily filing taxes or understanding that they had the potential of receiving up to a $5,000 check uh, as a refund, in effect. One of my good friends in Miami was concerned about the high level of poverty in the city of Miami. It's one of the poorest cities in uh, this country. And her name was, uh, is Barbara Garrett. So she got onto this idea that so much money was being left on the table and started studying and realizing that tens of millions of dollars could come into the Miami economy. And Barbara, through some other connections, began to make statewide connections. And through organizations like Leadership Florida, others around the state began to recognize how many families could truly be helped by Filing, for, filing their taxes, that yes, they were going to need help, and then being able to receive these checks that would support these families financially. Michelle said that uh, uh, I am the founding chairperson of a new nonprofit called uh, Florida Next Foundation. 
and I want to encourage you to look at our website, floridanext.org, because yesterday we posted the results of a poll uh, that we did just before the holidays. And I had several, there are several, I found several ahas in this poll, but uh, related to this issue of EITC and financial stability, uh, one of the questions we asked was one of my other banker friends said, Alex, find out whether or not Floridians are, are trying to save. Because uh, this, is, this is something that we want to focus on, is encouraging our customers to just put a little something, just put a little bit away every month. I said, okay. So results come back. Good news. Almost 70% of the respondents said, yes, they are making an attempt to save some money on a regular basis. But here's the follow-up question. Okay, good. So how much savings do you have? Six in ten of the respondents say they have one month's salary or less in savings. Some of you who work in this area, that's probably not a surprise to you. But what that translated to me was, six in ten Floridians have less than one month's savings. No wonder they're freaked out about losing their job. No wonder they believe that they are just one pink slip away from a major financial catastrophe. And so the work that you volunteers are doing and all the organizations are doing, starting out, kicking off today, let's beat that uh, last year's number was 9,300 families were helped. Let's beat that number. We're after 10,000 plus, aren't we, Diana? And as much as $10 million coming back into our economy because while, yes, we want these families to save part of that money they get back and they're going to get counseling about how to save and maybe save to buy a house. There's no better time to buy a house than right now with the housing values low. And I heard on the way in this morning once again, lowest historical mortgage rates in the history of this country, in the 3% range. Now is the time. We also want to recognize that when we help these families, we're helping ourselves as well. Because that means that we have kids going to school who aren't worried about mom and dad so much who know that they've got more stability in their family in terms of the food they eat, the places they live, and their hope for the future. And uh, Dr. Atwater, we want these kids and these families to realize a dream of going to college. And there is no better place for our kids to start that college journey than right here at HCC. Because another statistic we know is that when you look at the unemployment levels in this country, and yes, thankfully, finally, our unemployment levels are coming down, it is skewed because the unemployment levels among college graduates are in the single digits, maybe 4 to 6 percent. The unemployment level of someone who has some college education is a little bit higher, maybe 7 to 9 percent. But we know that the unemployment levels of people who have just finished college with no further education or people who have not even graduated high school are in the high double digits. So not only is this EITC project for putting money in the hands of the families, but hopefully we're then able to translate a little of that money that might be coming back to a family into, okay, let's get started on getting you into HCC and furthering your education so you can have a better paying or sustainable job. So once again, this, uh, as Michelle said, I had a tremendous opportunity when I was your CFO for four years uh, to sponsor uh, resolutions and to go all around the state encouraging other communities but there's no better place than right here in Hillsborough County you're doing the Lord's work you are helping families achieve financial stability and thank you again so much for letting me share my message with you
you've, you've seen several of the partners identified in, in the room today. 71,000 people do not get assistance without help. And uh, one of those uh, key partners uh, in, our, in our community has been Hillsborough Community College. And we, I'm going to ask Linda Tarago to come up now, who's a professor of accounting and the free tax prep site coordinator here at um, HCC, uh, to bring a couple of remarks to you. Thank you. As a professor, I could talk for forever, so I'll try to keep it really short. Um, I've been doing taxes here since 2003, grew up with taxes, my dad was an IRS agent during Watergate and all those fun times, so he was really involved. So I guess I was kind of predestined to do taxes. The reason that HCC started doing taxes is I had students sitting in the front of my classroom telling, talking to each other about how much they were spending to have a 1040 EZ done, $75, $150, and then they were telling me they couldn't afford their textbooks, which, you know, for a professor it's like, really? No. So um, I realized, so I started talking to people and I mentioned to them, you know, I've heard about doing free taxes and we were able to bring it onto campus. As a community college, I believe it is our goal that we should be out there providing services for the community. After all, your tax dollars do pay for this institution. I've been very privileged to be involved. The college has supported me. Our Students in Free Enterprise Club does fund the entire event. They pay for all the toner cartridges and the paper and they help staff the greetings. So, we have the students actively involved. We work with the University of Tampa accounting students. They come in here and they get first-hand knowledge. And many of them come from very affluent families. But they work with people that are not in such good situations. And they tell me that it's been one of the largest growing experiences of their lives. They have a whole new appreciation for what their career can really bring to them. So I would like to thank you for letting us be part of this because an education in the classroom is not near as good as an education out in the world. And that's what I believe that allowing us to be part of this does bring to it. So thank you very much. We look forward to many, many more years. I think I've got about 20 more years here. So um, <laughs> still, still not old enough to retire. So I'll be here for a while. And uh, my husband, who was here earlier and he left, he does help me. He's with the bookstore. And um, we are a family here at HCC. And we believe that we do want to make a difference in the community. So please allow us to. And if there's anything we can ever help you with, the business department here and the college itself, Please come to us. Our students are the greatest resource, and I believe one of the greatest resources of Hillsborough County. And uh, they know more than we do. They just don't know they do. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, thank you, Hillsborough Community College, for all of the support that you provide. Thank you. Um, you know, <clears throat> you might think that our little financial stability committee and United Way of Tampa Bay is, you know, cut off at the boundaries of Hillsborough County or Hillsborough and Pinellas County. However, we do have partners that reach well beyond our borders. And uh, one of those partners is uh, the incredible Mr. Michael Rausch, who is the director of the Real Economic Impact Tour of the National Disability Institute. And we are so, let me say this too, we are so glad to have them as partners in this because there are so many other communities that we need to reach. So, Michael. Good morning, everyone. Um, can you hear me okay? All right. I have to raise this a little bit. Is that okay? That's not mine. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. Um, before I say a, a few remarks, um, which many of them have been uh, said already, um, the Ronald Reagan quote, it's a great quote. I had it in my notes. So, oh, actually, you did a wonderful <laughs> job, much better than me. But I must say that um, it's such an honor that I can sit at a table with Alex Sink. Um, at the National Disability Institute in Washington, D.C., um, Alex Sink is a superstar to our organization. Um, whenever she was the chief financial officer, uh, her and her team brought financial football to um, students 
throughout the state. And as we went and looked at the school districts and worked with them to increase outreach on that program and financial literacy for students, we found that students with disabilities were not receiving the information. Um, it went to the mainstream classrooms and not to the ESC programs. So um, Alex Sink's office and her team met with us. Um, they became educated and they were tireless advocates to see that financial education, when they say financial education for all Floridians, they meant all Floridians, including Floridians with disabilities. And the cool thing about it is, is that the work that her and her team had done is serving as best practices for other uh, state treasury offices, for other um, CFOs across the country. And so we greatly appreciate the work that you and your team had done um, to see that persons with disabilities can achieve economic self-sufficiency. So I'm starstruck, so thank you so much. So we are so pleased to be a partner with the United Way of Tampa Bay. Um, I shared with um, Diana Baker, I had worked with United Way for, for several years, and so uh, today was the first day I got to meet her. I've worked with Emery and Cara and Ellen, and um, I, I was sharing with her that Tampa Bay has been a, a, a breeding ground, um, and with United Way of Tampa Bay to create new best practices to be shared across the country with tax coalitions um, uh, throughout the country. At the National Disability Institute, we are based in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately for me, I get to live in Florida. Um, and our mission is to promote income preservation and asset development for persons with disabilities. We are working uh, to build a, a better economic future for persons with disabilities. We are tirelessly working with coalitions like United Way, like the fin Financial Stability Committee, to end poverty. We believe that we can end poverty. We believe we can. Um, and several of um, the folks here are, are working tirelessly on that as well. Um, the program that I oversee is the Real Economic Impact Tour, and we're so pleased to be able to fund uh, the coalition here in Hillsborough County. Um, the Real Economic Impact Tour in uh, started in 2006 when the Internal Revenue Service called us. You know, I don't know about you all, when the IRS calls, we jump. And uh, <laughs> so they called and they said, we want to look at free tax preparation. We we want to look at the earned income tax credit and we want to look at persons with disabilities. And why aren't persons with disabilities utilizing VITA services? Why aren't they claiming the earned income tax credit? Um, you know, persons with disabilities are five times more uh, likely than a person without a disability to live in poverty. And so we started to look at that and we found that there's the fear of if um, I claim uh, or file a tax return, I will lose my public benefits, supplemental security income, Medicaid, um, or my income's too low, I don't have to file income taxes. Um, uh, but potentially, if you file and I make $600 in wages for that year, potentially, I could be eligible for the earned income tax credit and get an extra $400, which means what? It comes back into the community. So the, as we talk, about the Earned Income Tax Credit and VITA, and we look at um, bringing this to the disability community and to everyone in the community. As uh, uh, Congresswoman Castor had mentioned earlier, when we talk about economic stimulus packages, we need to talk about the Earned Income Tax Credit. We need to talk about VITA as well, because that is an economic stimulus package that's coming into our community.